What, Kyrie on the bench? New style, new vibe, part two. <laughs> what, was you, what was you saying? You said something about... Nah, the, the, the duel that Dame and Kyrie had in a way, nah, that, that was beautiful to watch. Now, that is shot-making... At its purest form. Yeah. To realize Kyrie needed Durant. (laughs) (laughs) Otherwise, yeah, they wasn't gonna win that game. (laughs) Hey man, they kept it close until that until that last part of that third one. So you you can't see much. Uh, Nurk had 23 and 11. It's Nurk I love to see. Hell yeah. I love seeing Nurk have those games. Oh, he yeah, always he's, at those kind of games, in, the, in my opinion. Yeah, well, he's kind of like, he can be the X Factor of the Blazers team. Because you notice when he goes down, yes, the Blazers, the Blazers don't really have aspirations to go far. Exactly. But I feel like the thing is, though, since they got cancer, though, I feel like even though they don't got those aspirations to go far, they feel like they can still get somewhere because of the fact that they have somebody like a cancer right behind right behind Nurkic or anything. Mm, they ain't going nowhere. And, hey, to be honest, why are we talking about them going somewhere? They ain't going anywhere. I feel bad for that. I mean, actually, I feel bad for both of them. I got to get rid of that image because, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, I mean, they, they getting back in the win column, at least, that's pretty good. They're the seventh spot, bro. They should have never been the seventh spot in the first place. That's embarrassing. Oh, they shouldn't have. You're right. But at the end of the day, with that win, they're only a half game back from the Mavericks. Mm. So, you know. Just one more win, and Mavericks lost, and they're back in it. Yeah. They're back out of it, I should say, <laughs> out of the playing game. That's like the danger zone. <laughs> well, that's like the danger zone for any team. <laughs> you know, Luca damn sure don't want to play. <laughs> oh, Luca want no part of that. <laughs> now, I like Luca don't want no kind of part of that. But let, let me tell you something. He's going to get part of it. He's going to get part of it. Because let me tell you something. Dame has experienced how it is to play in the playing game. And let me tell you something. Dame don't want no part of that just as much or probably even as more as Luka. Yeah. So are you picking the Blazers to get out of it? This, I honestly don't even want to choose because yeah. Yeah. we'll save it. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll save it. We'll save it. I, I, yeah. I don't want to choose that. Cause I know Sun gonna end up messing up. <laughs> what, like the Blazers choking again? <laughs> yes, basically. Hey, hey, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'll just get. I'll just gonna say it. that was a terrible fucking shot. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see the king back, though. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was. <laughs> I look at me. See the king back. Hey man, you playing against Sacramento, man? Sacramento basketball team. You you think you can make anything? But hey, that was a terrible shot. I was gonna say the King returning against the, but then I remembered. <laughs> even with this win, even with the I guess the defending champions, they still not doing it. <laughs> they still the basketball team to me. Yeah. I, you know, I was thinking uh, in my mind before the game started, I got to admit, before the game started, I was like, if things couldn't have gone bad for Sacramento already, then the King decides to make his return playing against them. Like, 
if if things couldn't get get bad to worse, I don't know what this is. But hey, they got lucky because yeah, because like you know, bad shot, and as a result, yeah, I know what you're about to allude to. But I mean, the struggles for the Lakers really it wasn't just that shot. Yeah. It was a good game. Then I guess the Lakers forgot how to play basketball in that fourth quarter. <sighs> yeah, I don't. What the hell happened? <laughs> Can you explain? I could. I could try to explain. Let, let's see. Um, not taking care of the ball. Um, not really being into that. Like you know. I don't know what it is, but, but I'm not going to use this as an excuse, but I guess like, like, you know, um, with everybody coming back down, like, you know, like now you want to see who's going to like, you know, probably like probably connect better. I, I like, I don't know what it is. I don't know how to, I, I'm, I know what I'm trying to say, but I don't know how to truly explain that part. Like, you know, it's just, just it was it, somewhat like, um, like, you know, first game back with all of them there. Yeah. New lineup with Drummond being asserted. LeBron hasn't played in a while. Yeah. 80s just now getting back into it. Yes, exactly. And like, you know, I'm not using that much of an excuse though, because this is the Lakers and this is Braun we're talking about. Braun doesn't need no, like, you know, no, like, you know, like, you know, no time to get back. Like he he could get back if he wants to right especially now. Against, especially against Sacramento. Exactly. So it's just like, you know, I'm not gonna use that Without much. Aaron. <laughs> I'm not gonna use that that much just as an excuse, but and Harrison, sorry. <laughs> nah, you good. I'm not going to use that as an excuse, but I feel like they just went cold at the wrong moment too, which is a common theme that we've seen most of the time within this NBA season. Teams just go cold in the wrong moments at the wrong times in which you just don't really want them to. So even though it's surprising at the fact that they only lost by four, but it's just like, you know, the the... You can't you can't lose games like this, especially to a team like Sacramento, who's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, they should have had that game. This really, they really played bad in the fourth quarter. You know, both sides of the ball, and then you know they finally get that break of um, LeBron getting that layup, be down by two, and AD getting that block. Yeah. And LeBron looking frustrated with AD. <laughs> uh, LeBron always looking frustrated. <laughs> yeah, man. This man is in year 18. Yeah. But yeah, but then that, what the hell was that shot? One, I don't know if, I don't know what the play call was. If that was a play call, Frank Vogel, that was dumb as f- If that was LeBron, it should just take that contested three-pointer with, like, four seconds remaining. That was dumb as fuck. And I know he's the greatest player on the, in the in the planet right now, one of the greatest of all time. That was still dumb as fuck. Well, that like, you know. A terrible shot. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't understand. One, like oh, hold on, before you go. go one, um, they did the same thing. They ran the same play because the Kings fouled them. They had a foul to give. So instead of changing it up or doing something else, oh, let's just do it again. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Hello? Can you at least maybe like fake a handoff to LeBron, Kuzma roll to the basket while AD's cutting or something? Or give it to LeBron, AD set the screen? I think that was they trying to do it. AD was setting the screen. LeBron just said, fuck it, I'm shooting. He said, fuck it, I'm pulling. Because <laughs> it looked like AD was coming up to set the screen, and LeBron, and then LeBron just pulled. <laughs> the AD tried to rush back to the basket and get the rebound. Le- 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 coach made his frustrations get the best of him. <laughs> Let frustrations get the best of him. Like, you know what I mean? Look, he look. You talk about the play call or something. You know the bro drew that up. He's saying, "Look, at these guys are getting me pissed. I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna take the shot myself. You know what I mean? We're gonna run the same thing again. They probably gonna find out. But yeah, I'm taking this shot because I know I can make it. Well, nah, you're not making it, buddy. Sorry. Yeah, it was impossible. Like, no way. But I, I just don't understand. You're down by two. There's enough time to get some dribbles and get a quick play up. 
Yeah. I was so rushed on a contested three pointer with time remaining. That just I, I don't understand that. I really don't understand that. And you kind of freed up some space around the paint too. Exactly. I don't always have to go for the win. It kind of irks me sometimes, especially in the modern NBA, when a lot of teams want to go from the win when they're down by two. Yeah. They want to, they want to pull that three. LeBron should know better. That's not even the best attribute of his game. Take the ball, go tank mode, and drive to the hoop. <laughs> God damn it. What the hell? <laughs> exactly. So you're telling me you you that built just to just to take pretty boy jump shots from no, back? No, no, you can't say that. You can't say that. You're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say that. Only I you you definitely not allowed to say oh, okay. that. Okay. Oh, you I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Remember that. the Devil Nuggets that. series, yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, let's, just, uh, let's get some context. Let's get some context. So around last year, um we was during the bubble and we was talking and heading into uh the closeout game, game five. You know, you was upset. That LeBron was just, why is he taking these so many jump shots? Why is he taking so many jump shots? You be driving to the basket. Do I want to see him pull up? He's LeBron James. Go to the basket. Then we'll have a game five. How do he close it out? <laughs> jump shot, jump shot, jump shot, jump shot, jump shot. Over and over and over again on the United Denver Nuggets team and closed out the series oh, no. onto the finals, which they eventually won. That's the, the... So you can't say that. You can't say, you're not allowed to say that. I swear that's unfair. I swear that's unfair because LeBron waited until I said something like that just to talk about, oh, all right, now I'm going to hit jump shots just to show you I can hit jump shots. No Hello? Point. He's arguably the greatest player of all time. You don't think he has that mentality? <laughs> Come on, man. He, he, probably did. He, he probably had the first person to say that, so he probably did read it somewhere or something. Or saw it somewhere, bro. Uh, bro, I'm t- yo, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Look, let me tell you this, bro. This man, well, you, we both know this man is not a jump. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he can't shoot, obviously, because he could shoot. Anybody could shoot, mm-hmm. but he's not a pure jump shooter. And the way he was going on that series, this a lot of times his shot selection was just like we was just like, what are you doing? Like, why take a jump shot when you know you could uh, uh, t- get to the basket on these guys, draw a foul or something. I know, I know young LeBron would have done that. And I know older LeBron is probably thinking wiser. But I was just like, bro, you can still, these guys are playing up when you, you can still beat them. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Nah, young LeBron pulled on Hilo Turkle. He would have pulled. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> but I was just like, you know, I'm just like, you know, I'm like, yo, like, why are you taking the jump shot for? Like, this is not your game. That's not your game. Your yeah, game is being... Oh. You're right. That's not his game. But he closed out that series <laughs> with jump shooting. Something that's not his game. Respect greatness. <laughs> but we didn't see it last night. <laughs> but uh, uh, still, it's so good to see the King back. It's yeah. nice to see LeBron back. You know, Lakers, their best chance is him and AD on that court together. So, yeah. Welcome back, Braun, even though the Kings did end up winning. Actually, now we got to apologize to the Kings, huh? Tyrese, I'm sorry, Tyrese. Uh, first of all, Sacramento, correction, don't both for I apologize to Tyrese Halliburton. Well, nobody apologized to Buddy Hill because I don't know what the hell happened to him. I don't even think he looked like funny right, here, bro. Anyway, uh, Rashawn Holmes, because you you kind of be attacking Buddy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, look, I don't know what happened. More, more like, more like funny field than Buddy Hill, bro. What? Funny, funny field? field? Not nah, funny field. Funny. Funny field. field. Yeah. And let's Buddy and let's Buddy Hill, bro. Yeah, add a pen. Yeah. That would be it. A pen drop. Yeah, pen drop. It's just so embarrassing. Oh but yeah. Uh, we got you a new said, top. Do- what? You said Rashawn Holmes. Yeah, Rashawn Holmes. Yeah, he had a good game. Yeah, and the bench played well for the Kings as well. 
Yeah, well, yeah they stepped up. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down with Buddy. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hey, we got a new top dog in the Western Conference. Who's that? Oh! The Phoenix Suns. Yes, new top sir. dog in the Western Conference. <laughs> Beat the Jazz. Convincing yeah, fashion. Out of them. Be out of them. <laughs> Beat them in convincing fashion. And yes, they are the number one seed. Hey man. I guess I guess Chris Paul for MVP for sure. Like guaranteed. So far now. I already put my take out there. It's on TikTok. So go follow our TikTok. Um, but you know, with, in terms of the, the words, he's the most valuable player. He's more valuable to the Suns. That any any one player is to their team um this year. Besides, of course, um, if LeBron was healthy and playing this year, it would be LeBron one. Yeah. But he's just Chris Paul is spectacular. But he's not the only one spectacular on that team. Yeah. You got yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. You got you got Booker, you got Aiden, you got um you you got a lot of good Bridges. down on the team. Bridges, you got Cam Johnson, you got Cameron Payne, you have Dario Sarge, uh, no, oh my God, people are for. Uh, speaking of Dario Sarge, mm-hmm. I, I know, I, I don't know, I don't know if he had a good game or not last night. I'm not gonna lie, I gotta admit. But speaking of Dario Sarge, people tend to forget, like you know, how nice he actually is. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember it, but you remember when? Okay, he was I in Philadelphia. Him. Yeah, I do. Yeah, he, yep, that way he was battling for. Yo, man, he was getting buckets. He was getting buckets when he was in Philly. And like him, his own teammate Joel, and I think Brogdon, they were all battling out for, for that rookie of the year that year, right? It was all three of them. Oh yeah, you're right. It was Brock. I think it was wasn't somebody else. I don't. I don't. I know for a fact it was Brock. I don't can't. I can't remember, man. But Brogdon won rookie of the year that year. Yeah, yeah. Brogdon, yep. Injury. Brogdon won it. Brogdon won it. And he um become the first second round pick. Um, second round pick to win it. But it's just like yo, like. It's crazy. I'm just like, yo, this Suns team, they got some really good talent. It's like the fact that, like, if you look from top to bottom, it's just like, you know, these are guys who, if you if you put, like, most of them in different situations, I feel like they flourish. If you put Sarge in a situation which he's probably, like, you know, the second or third best option for the team, I feel like he'll flourish. Like, you know what I mean? It, it, it just things like that. And, like, you know, it just all alludes to the greatness of Chris Paul. What he's been able to do for this Phoenix, and of course Devin Booker, obviously, I'm not yeah, give, give that man some praise. Give that man some praise. Because obviously, I don't think they would be where they are. Of course, without Devin, Devin has been with this team since the dark, since the darkness. So let's look at that. But Chris Paul came in, knew who he was. He knew the Phoenix Suns blueprint. He knew what they had. He took that. He ramped it up. He just ramped it up. He he um he he pushed Devin Booker to another level, he, as if Devin Booker wasn't already over the level, another level. But he pushed him. He pushed the eight into another level. Even though we do want to see more from Aiden, because we know Aiden could do more than what we than what he's doing this season. He's still talented, nonetheless, and he's being pushed hard. You talk about Cam Johnson, Mikael Bridges, all those other guys on the team. Um, I believe Jay Crowder, if he didn't get traded. And like you know, he crowds on the team fool. Yeah, <laughs> but like you know, everything just put all the pieces together and just rev up this team. And as a result, this team is now this team is first from from missing the playoffs to being first. That's beautiful. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. What's going on, in Phoenix, Arizona? Mm-hmm. Uh, sad that the Jazz got a drop though, because you know how much I care for the Jazz, especially since they've been ragged on this entire season. <laughs> And they want their respect, and they got to go out there and earn it. With, hey, with Mitchell, with Mitchell out, yeah, it's kind of hard. Yeah, I uh, think. Hey man, look at blame Braun. Braun is the reason why y'all why y'all got to blame Braun. Stop, <laughs> Braun stop. did that to you. Stop, no, no, stop, wait, stop, wait, stop, wait. stop, stop, stop. The Braun disrespect, no, no, the disrespect to the Jazz happened, but months before LeBron said that about the All Star team. Oh, I know that nobody brought them up. Nobody brought them up. But I'm telling you, when you LeBron James and, and you could say a certain statement, like you know, that statement gets a lot. 
Like, you know, talk about nobody t- nobody uses the jazz and like, you know, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's man. true. That's true, but <laughs> but um, I'm not blaming yeah, Braun for that. But yeah, man, they, look, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter where this Utah Jazz team fall, to be honest. If they get the first – if they got first place, second. Don't get me wrong. They will want first place. Mm. But even that second place, let me tell you something, they're going to do some damage. They still got home court advantage, and they're going to do some damage to whoever they play against in the playoffs. They're going to do a lot of damage. When Donovan Mitchell comes back and that team is – that team is already – that team already has everything from scoring, shooting, defense, pace, um – Flow, IQ, um, and just people who could get it going real quick. Like, you know, when Donovan Mitchell gets back, they're gonna get they're gonna get back to the way they are. They're gonna be fine. Yeah, but I'll tell you this, they need the number one C more than the Suns do. But yeah, for sure. For sure. Yep. That's what it comes down to for me. Um, all right. Well, at least in, the Suns didn't blow a 32 point lead. Unlike your boys down there in Texas. <laughs> like your boys down there in San Antonio. What's going on? What was that? No, yeah, man. Yeah, Tatum. Tatum. Dunk on that nigga Tatum. <laughs> that's, that's all I can really say. That's all I can really say, man. Um, I don't I don't know what happened. Damar, I still love you, bro. You know, it's always it's always love, OG. Like, you know. Come on, come on. But I don't, I, I don't know what, what Popovich, Popovich is an old man. He's an old man. Like, you know, seeing this, must have nearly killed him. God forbid. <laughs> because I don't know what was that. I don't know what happened. Things was going so well. Y'all had it cooking. Y'all had it flowing offensively. That first half up by what you just said, 32 points. 32 points. But for some odd reason, okay, look, I know this is a common theme for the Celtics in which they're always finding some way to fight back in order to close out the game and stuff. I, 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 like, I don't know how they put off this miracle. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it at all. Even, <laughs> even with Tatum's performance. Exactly. Tatum had a performance for the ages. Exactly. I'm just like, yo, I'm like, Tomo. Because, like, if you look at it, the things didn't start changing until, like, like close to the end of the, that third quarter. Mm-hmm. Like, they were still up a lot until, like, towards the end of that quarter. And they were still up a good amount of points at the end of that third quarter. So that's what makes it even bad. The fact that you made this team just, like, I don't, like, you know how demoralizing that has to be? Be up by that much. And then you go down to it, and, you know, it's getting close to the end of the game. And then all of a sudden, something just happens. Like, something just goes wrong. Like, boom. And then, oh, you know, next thing, the team, the team just, Rally back to beat you in overtime. That's embarrassing. That is embarrassing. They shouldn't have even became close to even tying up the game, let being even down by single digit points, let alone tying up, um, getting back and getting the game in overtime. That is demoralizing. Yep, while the other guy on the team is dropping 60. 60 Tatum. Yep. And you want to, you, you speaking of 60 and Tatum. Tied the crew um franchise record for 60 points in the game. Kind of broke if he wanted to, but like it was like you know kind of too late for that. But <sighs> I'm glad he didn't break it. Larry, Larry needs some recognition. These young kids don't know about Larry. Larry Legend. Well, <laughs> now they need to go search up who 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 um who he tied um who Tatum tied with. Yeah, yeah. I remember the, speak, speaking to that. I remember um, I seen some interview with Kobe, rest in peace, Kobe, mm-hmm. but uh, from like a few years ago. And he was like, it was like a little media or whatever, like he was talking. And they had an audience listening to him talking and he was talking about Larry Bird. He was like, I don't know how can Larry Bird, someone slow as shit. And he was out there balling. <laughs> <laughs> what am I seeing? What am I seeing so differently than everybody else is seeing? You know, how is he able to do this? And all that, and then he asked the crowd, he's like, Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all watch Larry Bird, y'all know Larry Bird. And he said, and He saw it hands raised, and he was like, This should be more hands raised. <laughs> nah, man, you see that? That's he has a whole point. 
that's called look, you got to respect the legends that came along before because they are the ones who usually transcend the game. Larry Bird, believe it or not, transcended the game from shooting aspect because nobody's really shooting threes like the way he was during that time. And I know Reggie Miller eventually came in, but I, I can't name anybody else during that time who was shooting threes more than Larry Bird, to be honest. He was he was the very first. I mean, it literally a part of um them getting that three-point line was kind of because of him. Exactly. And <laughs> Look, we always hear this thing, but I always say skill over shines over any kind of athletic ability anytime. Larry Bird is the prime example of you probably not the quickest, the fastest, you know, the you know, the most strongest or whatsoever. Yep. But if you really dedicate yourself to really learn about the fundamentals of the game and being trying to learn how to be so flawless in that aspect. You could eventually outthink, outsmart your guy, and you could have an advantage on the court in that kind of way. And due to the fact that the dude was obviously he was blessed in terms of height, six nine, six ten. The dude has a deadly jump shot. He could pull it from anywhere. His post game was amazing. His IQ was amazing. His passing was amazing. His shot selection was amazing. This dude was out, was always like, you know, 30 steps ahead of his men, even yep. his teammates. Yep, and he definitely let you know about it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly and like you know he's so nice and it's just like you know he 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 talking he talking trash but it's just like you know it's like it's it's like if 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 things is going his way you can't really see <laughs> and uh, we gotta we gotta do a, like a whole like video on larry bird because he's actually he's just incredible but exactly, uh, man. someone who has skill um just like larry had skill tatum playing on the celtics and you can see Tatum is just unbelievable in the way he plays. He is so skillful. <laughs> and you can see that he's worked to get to this point. It's a, how good that he really is. And it's just scary how better he can get and how young he is. Exactly. Him him, and somebody who, even though they have a sh- great, great game, who came up with a big shot the, um, in that overtime, Jalen Brown, it's, it's scary how the fact that the Celtics really got these two. And the fact that they're only getting better. <laughs> the fact that they're nice now, they look, well, Tatum is obviously way more polished than Brown, of course. But mm. the fact that they both are skilled, they look good and they look like they're constantly polishing. But the fact that they can still get better and add more to the game, it, it, it leaves a scary sight. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is scary. Tatum. Tatum is just something different. And the Spurs saw that last night. <laughs> and, and, and just real quick, just add on one more thing. Mm. Like that this dude, these guys, like who are probably like, you know, 25 and 23 um, perspectively, the fact that they got experience already, like they really got experience. I'm talking about deep playoff experience. Makes it more deadlier. Like that is, I just really thought about that. Now that's ridiculous. His rookie year, he was in East Conference Finals, going up against Braun in seven game series, and dunked on his head. <laughs> it was a few possessions away of going to the finals. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. But uh, Spurs so disappointing. But let's move on from that topic. Let's go on to the predictions. It's a nice set of games. Uh, a lot of, a lot more games than it was last yeah, yeah. night. So, uh, Pistons Hornets. Hornets. I think you hesitated. Hornets. Uh, ESPN seven thirty. Warriors and the Rockets. Not twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. Um, Rockets. I mean Hornet. I mean Warriors. <laughs> well, hey. Kevin Porter Jr. putting up 50 and 11. Yeah. Uh, my bad, my because my mind switched to that immediately. That's even the rocket. Uh, if you want to pick the rocket, you pick the rocket. But I, I got the Warriors. Warriors kind of need to get some type of momentum going. Jesus Christ. Um, the Bulls going against the Hawks. Um, Hawks. Bulls. Bulls upset. Heat against the Cavs. Heat. Heat. Grizzlies against the Magic. 
Grizzlies. Yeah, Grizzlies. They played last night. The Grizzlies whacked them. Uh, Pelicans going against Timberwolves. Um, ooh, oh, actually, I got the Timberwolves with that one. Interesting, I interesting. I have Pelicans. Pacers of the Thunder. Um, Pacers. Pacers. Wizards of the Mavericks. I think I think um with if they lose it if Mavericks lose this one then it's tied right. Or... No, if the Mavericks lose, well, yeah, actually, yes, yes, it is tied. Okay. Well, I got the magic. <laughs> magic. I mean, the Mavericks. <laughs> I got the Mavericks. <laughs> and I got the Wizards, Raptors, and the Jazz. Um. Oh, that's easy, Jazz. Jazz. And lastly, though we had a 10 o'clock ESPN. Rematch of the second round. Where one team embarrassingly blew a 3-1 lead. Nuggets against the Clippers. <laughs> um Clippers. They better take advantage of this. I, 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 I like no Murray. Like, like that's the dude who killed you. That's the dude who Clipper, fucking annihilate you. Clippers have no Kawhi. They still got PG. And the Nuggets have an MVP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly the MVP this season. Still got, they still got a better team than the Nuggets. See, I, I call it, you know, I said yesterday. I just think you, I, I wasn't disrespecting anybody. I'm just saying, I'm just keeping no, it real. I'm going to say, I'm say, I'm not going to say anything. Racist. Uh, and I got the Nuggets. <laughs> How is that racist? Listen, all, listen, all I know is when it comes to European players and white players, you you, you move a little bit funny. Unless it's like what? <laughs> you move I a just bit spoke funny. about Dario Saric. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Damn, I can't do that. I want to get Twitter to attack you. <laughs> Twitter could attack me all they want. I don't care. <laughs> well, I do. So let's calm down. <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah, that's predictions. Um, final thoughts. It's, it's, it's I got some final thoughts. Go ahead, it's officially May today, yes, March, yes, May it 1st. Is. It's the last month of the regular season, mm-hmm. only like nine, ten games left. Man, man, uh, it's crazy how far we we made it. <laughs> we actually yes. made it. But this is. Some of these teams looking kind of kind of weak right now. I don't, I don't know. They look kind of vulnerable. So with a month of May hitting, I think it's my job to inform everyone the stand, the standings mm-hmm. and what it's looking like for the playoffs right now. If the playoff was to start today, let's do that. <laughs> Let's go on the playing games, Eastern Conference, the Heat, Hornets, Pacers, and Wizards. The Heat and the Hornets will play. They are the seventh and the eighth. The Heat will have um will be the home team of that game. Of course, the winner of that game goes on and will be the seventh seed in the Eastern Conference. Mm-hmm. And the loser would face the winner of the ninth and the tenth seed between the Pacers and the Wizards. Pacers have a home um court for that game. The winner of that game will go. Um, you know, so face the loser the, of the Heat yeah. and the Hornets yeah. game, and they will be the eighth seed. Yeah, and the seventh seed will face the Sixers. The eighth seed will face the Nets. The Nets look like they have home court advantage for the Eastern Conference. The Bucks would face the Celtics, the third and the sixth, and the Knicks and the Hawks will face in the fourth and the fifth matchup. Mm. So that's in the East. For the West, playing games right now, we talk about the Blazers. Seventh will go up against the Grizzlies. As I just mentioned, the winner of that game will be the seventh seed. And the loser will face up against the ninth and tenth seed winner between the Spurs and the Warriors. Uh, looking kind of dim for those teams, though, however, because they will have to face either the seventh seed, will have to face the Jazz, AC would have to face the Suns as of right now. The Clippers will face the Mavericks in a rematch from last year's first round series. 
Mm -hmm. um, and the Nuggets and the Lakers battled fourth and the fifth seed rematch of the Western Conference Finals. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of things can change. A lot of things can yeah. change. Talk about the Mavericks and the Blazers. That can change. Um, still at fourth, fifth, sixth, um, seventh. Um, in the Eastern Conference, can just flip and flop. It's just ridiculous. Hey man, the way the playoffs race has been going since the second half of the season started, I'm not surprised that it could flip and flop. We talked about how tight it was in the Eastern Conference and how things, how like one loss could just affect the whole standings of everything. Like you know what I mean? So it's just like you know. Mm -hmm. At this point, just let the games begin. Just let the games begin. I'm going. I'm going to treat this like the Hunger Games. Like this, y'all, y'all are fighting for survival. Who's going to come out on top? Let's see. Let's see who's going to end the season off real well. Uh, it will be interesting. Last month of the season is go time. Yeah, it really is go time. This is the final stretch. Yeah, and just one more thing, please. No more 10:30 games, man. No more 10 30 games, please, man. Like, like I was like, fine, 12 30, obviously, but like I'm just like, I'm not trying to wait until no one o'clock. Like, 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 come on now. Like, this is too much. Uh so the NBA gotta do what they gotta do, I guess. Hey, <laughs> Adam Silver, you you don't want to see me. What are you gonna do? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he's going to say that. Me. I mean, he is going to say that. <laughs> it's not even whether like you will beat him up, like you wouldn't even get close enough to him. <laughs> not if, I wouldn't even be able to step in the same kind of like block that he's on. Block now, Adam Silver is lives in the hood. Uh. <laughs> Good night. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, go watch tomorrow's podcast when it is available. Wait, I'm make sure it's not an 11 o'clock game. No, there isn't. So yeah, back wait, wait, tomorrow. Wait, wait. We got to we got to talk about um John Wall. Oh yeah, yeah, John Wall. Um, John Wall was out was diagnosed um a few days ago. Actually, he's out for the rest of the season. So he won't be returning with the Rockets. To be honest, not that it even mattered. Um, but for the sake of John Wall, because the respect we have for John Wall, we'll mention <laughs> that, um, which is unfortunate because of the injuries that he's been battling for the past four years, which literally mm -hmm. he's been out for two full seasons. Exactly. So, and, yeah. Yeah, and outside of – and it's crazy because even though it doesn't mean much, I was like, hey, for the um, – outside of Christian Wood – and as of recently, of course, he's been the second bright spot for this Rockets team. Yep, and there hasn't been a lot of bright spots. And third will be kept for Jr., of course. Yes. But, um, yep, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, watch tomorrow's podcast when it is up and running. Like, share, subscribe, comment, feedback, anything yeah. need to help us um, help support the podcast. You have something else to say? Yep, and just make sure to follow our IG and our TikTok down in the description below. Yes, and I am Evan. And I'm Ja. And this is the Mind of Basketball Podcast. <laughs>